Welcome to the bullpen. This is one of my favorite segments to fill in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Um, I love it, but I especially love it when she's on. One of my favorite doctors who break, she keeps it a buck. Okay, Dr. Tiffany Lloyd joins us once again, host of Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff, professor, author, activist, political scientist. Um, and I think I'm especially excited today for the topic, Doc, because when you, and we'll just give it to people, corruption of Clarence Thomas and Florida slavery benefited black people, controversy. Um, and I know you're gonna do great and you're gonna school anybody out there who may have accidentally landed on us and doesn't share our ideals. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm so frustrated. I go back and forth, Dr. Tiff, with do I explain this to these fools or do I just keep on moving like it's not even happening? I think mm -hmm. we have to do this commentary though, don't we? Yes, because there are people, Sharon, that I believe they are just committed to misunderstanding. You know, they refuse to hear us, they refuse to understand what we're saying because they already have it in their mind that they're right and that we're wrong. It's amazing that every person out there that is not African American has the answers to what black people should do. But until you have walked in our shoes, until you have faced racism, you don't qualify to tell us how we should feel. You don't qualify to tell us what we should do. So people are committed to misunderstanding us. I see I knew you were going, now you got my blood all pumping and stuff. I'm gonna try to get, I'm gonna try to get my blood pressure down. But there's something that I heard over the weekend and it resonates. It's not, you know, this like wow or a shocker. But when someone said it, I thought, oh my goodness, 911 emergency. What we have here are people who are trying to indoctrinate an entire generation, skew them towards white supremacy. And you said these are people who actually believe this stuff. I want to push back, do they? Or is it necessary for their own insecurities? To survive, mm -hmm. it's necessary for their own insecurities to survive. I, I mean, for <laughs> you know, it's amazing that Sharon, I receive so much hate mail coming on here. You know, when people say, call us racist, saying that all we care about are black issues, uh, you know, in America, and that we don't know what we're talking about. Even when I have people that come at me and say, how can a black woman like that have a PhD? This woman yes. is not true. So, you know, it's such an insult. So I think that, you know, it it, it is like you just said, feeding their own insecurities. I don't hmm. go back and forth with fools. Yeah. Yeah. Uh let's pivot to because I want to talk longer about this guy who wears the black robe. I I think he has imposter syndrome. I really do. And knows he doesn't belong there, but wants to keep all the privilege and power of that position. But I feel like these justices, talking about Clarence Thomas and his friends, um, they're saying the quiet part out loud. They don't give a about what is being done, what's been revealed by this investigative reporting out there. So break it down because you use the word corruption. And that's a powerful word, um, but it seems you, you mean it. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, Chief, uh, Chief uh, Clarence Thomas um, has forgotten who he is. Clarence Thomas is such a hypocrite because this is a man who has benefited his entire life on affirmative action. But yet, the, yet ladies and gentlemen, he has received everything his entire career because of affirmative action. Now that you have received everything that you wanted, now you want to shut the door for people that look like you so they don't get it. It is such hypocrisy. This is a person who has taken lavish, expensive vacations from Harlan Crow. Isn't it amazing, isn't it ironic that there have been about eight Supreme Court cases concerning Harlan Crow and all of the cases 
Clarence Thomas has voted in favor of Harlan Crow. Isn't it amazing that Harlan Crow has paid the tuition of Clarence Thomas great nephew Mark Martin going to private schools? Isn't it amazing that allegedly Harlan Crow has also funded Clarence Thomas mother house for some time? But we want to say that this is not corruption, that this is normal. How can we trust a system that allows this severe misconduct? This dishonesty. This is a person, Clarence Thomas. You say that you don't believe in affirmative action. Yet you went to the Holy Cross in 1968 because of affirmative action. You got into Yale because of affirmative action. The former Attorney General from Missouri hired you because he, and I quote, said, he said he's looking for blacks. He wants a more diverse office. So he hired you because you were black. The Reagan administration hired you because you were black. Thurgood Marshall, God rest his soul, the first African American to serve on the US Supreme Court justice. You replaced him because you are black. So to say that affirmative action does not benefit you, it is hypocrisy. And let me also say this, Clarence Thomas also said that he put a 15 cent stamp on his degree at Yale because that's just how little it means to him. Well, I say, I ask the question to you, Clarence Thomas, if your degree means 15 cent, then how worth, how much is your position on the Supreme Court worth? Because if your degree only means 15 cent, then maybe you should consider resigning because you're not worthy to sit on the bench. Mm. You broke that all the way down. I, I saw something, he's a man of few words, right? I, I mm. saw a list where, uh, some site had chronicled, um, it counted, did a word count of all the justices on the bench. And I think he spoke like, I don't know, 1% of the words, never pushed back, never asked any questions. I see him as a C student. But I also see something very scary in him for all the reasons you outlined. A black man, I picture him in, in slavery, historical slavery, if you will, being uh, the overseer. He's so hard on us. He's now, harder on us than they are. Oh, okay, yeah. he, he's all that. And so I ask this question because often the word shame gets a, a bad rap. I mm -hmm. think shame is good and we've lost it. I often wonder if Clarence Thomas walks into black spaces anymore or if he just steers clear of them because there's that unspoken thing where just like if I encountered you across a cocktail room, my smile would emerge. We kind of do that thing, I see you sis. He's not getting that, he's getting contempt and I'm ashamed of you. Do you mm -hmm. think he feels it at all? Mm -hmm. I think that he surrounds himself around African Americans that may have the same mindset that mm -hmm. he had which makes him feel justified in, in, in how he feels. I think a, a, a people that are like you and I, he's not going to surround himself. I often wonder, has Clarence Thomas received a hurt? Is he, is, is this a, uh, has he healed his inner child? Has there something happened from his childhood or his young adulthood that he has not healed from, which makes him think the way that he thinks now in 2023. A person that has endured racism himself, a person that has benefited from mm. affirmative action, but now saying that you don't see the need of affirmative action when this is, you wouldn't be where you are if it were not for affirmative action. And I wanna say this to all the people out there that say that affirmative action is racist. I want you to be quiet because affirmative action gets us through the door, but it doesn't keep us at the table. It is not because of affirmative action that got Clarence Thomas accepted all on his own. He had to have the GPA. He had to have brought something to the table. So affirmative action is not giving African Americans anything. It's allowing us a fair share where we were not allowed. Harvard didn't allow African Americans to go into after 200 years after that Harvard was, was open. So to say that affirmative action is racist, it is totally not true. The reason why we have HBCUs and why HBCUs are so important because we were not allowed to go to the PWIs. We couldn't go to Harvard, that's why we have Howard. 
We couldn't go to the University of Mississippi, which is why we have Alcorn State University. So until you know the history, I admonish all of you to stop talking about something that you don't have any knowledge of. Affirmative action gets us through the door, but it does not keep us at the table. We keep ourselves at the table. No one is asking for a handout. We're just asking for a fair share. Yeah, and it's the history here is so easy. It's just so easy. You don't want to know. And I think you're right, Dr. Tiff, by dis denying, if you will, the value of affirmative action. He's discrediting his own wins in this life. And by the way, the real affirmative action is the legacies and everything else that goes on in America today. That's the, that's the real affirmative action. As I said, we love you. Fascinating topic to chronicle with you. And I can't wait to be back with you. And if I do see you across that room, you know it, okay? You, you, you will feel the energy and the approval and the love. Uh, the bullpen, always enjoyable. Thank you very much, Dr. Tiff, and we'll see you next time.